welcome to the north slopes of Bath and especially here to St Stephen's Church Lansdowne. As you can see it's polling day when I'm filming this. Part of the benefits of St Stephen's Lansdowne with St Mary's Chalcombe and you are welcome whenever you're watching this and wherever you're watching you are welcome. My name is Philip Hawthorne, I'm the rector here and as you can see St Stephen's we have wonderful gardens, we have great gardens at St Mary's too. We have a great gardening teams and our gardening team here is very proud of this latest addition. It's a new climbing rose just been planted and it's called New Dawn and we'll be blessing this rose when we gather again for worship at Pentecost. Really looking forward to that. Just starting to rain so we'll go in. If you'd like an order of service they're on our website www.stephensbath .org.uk or you can find a link in the description to this video and maybe you'd like to have some bread and some wine for when we come to communion. I'll be making communion of course on behalf of everybody watching but if you'd like to have some as well that would be wonderful. So here we are at the business end of our church all ready to worship God, to reflect on God's word, and to share this heavenly feast of communion. Obviously, we're not together in person, but we're united by God's spirit. There we are. We're in Easter season, and we're reflecting on the resurrection, not just as an historical event 2,000 years ago, but the ripples of Jesus' new life uh, reach right the way forward to us today and into the future. And what difference does that make to our lives? That's what we're reflecting on. So some words from Jesus from our reading today. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last so that the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. In our order of service, we gather in the name of God, who is creator, redeemer, and holy and abiding spirit. Amen. Friends, the Lord be with you. So we light our Easter candle. Christ is risen. Alleluia, alleluia. He is risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia. So we prepare ourselves for worship by opening ourselves to all God has for us today. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen to bring new life to our world with a love stronger than death. Yet we often live with hearts entombed in fear. So we confess all that leads us and the world away from the light of God's goodness, as we say together. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. A moment to reflect on those words and what they mean for us at this moment.
Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all that is good, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's say the Gloria together as forgiven people. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And a collect for today, the sixth Sunday of Easter, where we're thinking about abiding. What does abiding mean? God of abiding love, you choose us as your servants and dare to call us friends. Take our fragmented hearts, commanding them to love making whole our joy, our life reborn in you, through Jesus Christ, who laid down his life for us. Amen. Jason Ambrose from St Stephen's will now read for us, and after that, Andrew will proclaim our gospel. Acts 10.44 to the end. Gentiles receive the Holy Spirit. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptising these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as they have? So he ordered them to be baptised in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the father will give you whatever you ask, in, ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It's so relevant to be here in the pulpit because that very much serves as a text for what I want to speak about today. So we pray together. Loving God, may your word and your spirit take root in our hearts and in our lives, that we may flourish and bear fruit. Amen. My dad loved birds. He and my mum, whenever they could, would go out with their binoculars and telescopes and watch them. They didn't so much have life lists as so many twitchers do, but they just enjoyed the variety of species that they were able to see. And in his flat in my sister's 
uh, house, his favourite chair overlooked a patio on which there were various feeders so that he could glance at them from the snooker or the football uh, to the activity there. Since he died in January, I've made my own bird table from bits of wood and stuff that I found. It's right outside my study window. And over the past two months or so, the birds have started to find it and to trust it. I've often been distracted from Zoom calls uh, at the arrival of a great tit or a robin, and I'm still hoping to see a goldfinch before too long. Birds are great to watch, and what I've noticed is how vigilant they are. I notice them on the fence, waiting to see if the coast is clear, and then quickly flitting to the table and constantly looking about to make sure there's no danger. They start on the top of the cage I've built to keep the pigeons off, and then quick as light, they hop down onto the table to feed on the seeds, looking about themselves all the time. Of course, that's what they need to do. They're vulnerable and fragile animals, and they're constantly in fear. Constantly in fear. Does that sound familiar? Love one another commands Jesus today. And of course, that's what we want to do. Just as soon as I've got through my own agenda, that fear agenda of my concerns and my problems, the things that bother me, the things that are unresolved, the things that I've put away for another day, the things that might happen, things often outside of our control, but we worry anyway. But Jesus never commands us without the promise of enabling and equipping. Abide in me, he prays for his disciples then. And through the years, he prays for us too, to abide in him. Abide, it's a wonderful word. The word John uses means to remain, to stay, to continue. And it can mean, of course, a place. One of the most common house names you'll see is bide a wee. And you can think of it as abiding in a home or that place where we can just be. Think of a place or of refuge or safety. After a long journey, you kick off your shoes, you sit back maybe by a fire, and you have a nice glass of something. A place where you know you are welcome, where you can just be yourself in that place of unconditional love. Where might that be for you? But it's not just referring to a place without, but also within. We might say, might we, I'm not in a good place at the moment. Jesus prays that his joy be in his disciples, that his joy be in us. This is what it means for him to abide in the place that he calls home. In a few moments, we'll sing one of my favourite hymns, and it has these lines. Breathe, O oh breathe, thy loving spirit into every troubled breast. Let us all in thee inherit, let us find the promised rest. This is what Peter sees in our first reading, as the Holy Spirit fills those with him. We rest when we abide, and when God abides in us. This week I had the absolute privilege of being interviewed by the NHS Voices of COVID, part of the NHS at 70 celebrations. I was one of 900 people nationally um, where the interview will be archived in the British Library. It was two hours of questions on my long COVID, but mainly about our churches here, how we fared in lockdown and our hopes and fears of coming out of it. One thing I said, was how I wanted our churches to be places where people felt 
they belong, all people, because that's what God wants for us all. We abide when we belong, and we abide when Christ abides in us. In morning prayer this week, we read some words from the first letter of Peter. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living, enduring word of God. Remember the parable of the sower, where the seed falls on four different kinds of ground. With the first three, the seed gets eaten by birds, scorched by the sun, and strangled by weeds. But the fourth, the deep, rich, nutritious soil, the good soil, is where the seed can take root and grow and produce fruit. Jesus says today, I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. This is where it all starts for us and for our churches, to know what it is for Christ to abide in us and for us to abide in God. That's what God has chosen us for, to belong, to abide, to bear the fruit of love, for perfect love casts out fear. God's seed lived on earth as Jesus and was buried in the depths of the earth. From there, he broke free, living towards the light to show that love conquers all. And now he comes to us and commands that we live that love. And he promises the Holy Spirit, the seed of God's Spirit, to be planted in rich soil of our hearts and our lives and our church. And this will happen when we don't just read God's word, but we allow it to become part of us. When we don't just scatter our prayer, but when we allow time for God to abide in us, to spend time with God. Once when I was preparing for uh, a contemplative prayer session of uh, Christian meditation, I read that prayer is like a cartwheel and we are the spokes and God is the hub. In our abiding, we move towards the centre, to God. And as we do, we get closer to the other spokes, to one another. If we want our churches to be places where people belong, then we need to find that belonging in Christ. And we do this when God abides in us. On Sunday, if you're watching on Sunday, we are going to be praying in St. Stephen's all through the day. Debbie will be present for us to come and pray with her in the time that we have. If you're watching this in time, do come and abide. And look out too for other ways that we can pray in our churches together. Love one another, for perfect love drives out fear. A prayer for us by St. Catherine of Siena, writing in the 16th century. The sun hears the fields talking about effort, and the sun smiles and whispers to me, why don't the fields just rest? For I am willing to do everything to help them grow. Rest, my dears, in prayer. Amen.
So we say together, the affirmation of faith as we declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Christian Duckworth from St Stephen's will now lead us in our prayers of intercession. O God, who was planted in this universe before it even existed, abide in us that we may go out into our communities and neighbourhoods and share your example. May your roots extend out through those who know your name. May they find those who need you, those who haven't heard of you, those whose lives are diminished without the flower of your love. May your love flourish in hard climates. Holding before you our community of Bath, we pray especially for those who are working here to confront climate change, those attempting to make a difference. We pray for the poor and homeless in our society, holding with grateful thanks the contributions that many people give through food banks. We thank you for the donations that aid. We praise you for the hands that help. Continue to fill with boundless love the hearts and minds of those who serve your name. We pray for our church communities, giving thanks for all the gifts that are brought before you in our benefice. Help us through prayer, silence and action to discern the ways in which we should move into the post-pandemic world able to engage with love our brothers and sisters everywhere, able to engage without prejudice, without fear, with trust in the knowledge that we are sent by you and the grace to rest in that. We hold before you with thanks our clergy team here and pray for your strength to abide in them and your light to rest upon them. Holding before you especially Andrew as he prepares for his ordination this Petertide. We pray for Jane Warren on her reader selection weekend. Continue to fill her with confidence in the path she is being called to walk and we hold before you Bishop Peter as he continues his treatment and Bishop Ruth as she carries on with the extra work of a diocesan bishop in Bishop Peter's place. Suffering God, we hold before you the places in this world that live with conflict those who live without the rights we enjoy, those that live with the fears and dangers of COVID-19 all around them. We pray especially for the people of India.
help this disease be overcome. Help, fairness and concern for others mean that vaccines get shared with those who can least afford them, with those who are the most exposed to the threat. We hold before you all those who are ill and in need of prayer. Bring your comfort and healing into their lives. Share with them the consoling riches of your kingdom. Remembering from our parishes, Baby Eloise, Lynn Kelly, Bill Fraser, Joe and Harry, Caroline, Peter and Colin Harvey. Graft into their hearts that most excellent gift of your love, which heals, consoles and upholds, which always abides the greatest of all your gifts. God of summer and autumn, God of flower and fruit, we give thanks for the lives we are given to lead, so short in the span of your sight, but so full, so fragile, so hard to start and quick to end. Be with those for whom the twilight of this life now falls. Comfort them as darkness draws in and the shadows of this world fade. Bring to them the knowledge and consolation of the eternal day that is yet to break upon them, of rest after a life well lived. Be a comfort to them. Be comfort. Take away fear. Take away sadness. And grant them peace. We pray especially for Valerie Brooke and her sons David and Patrick and Patience, her carer. For Joyce de Courcy Mead and for Dave Skinner. Abiding God, hold them and be with them always. We pray for your comfort to be poured into the lives of those who have passed from this world and the, those who live with loss. We pray for the soul and the goodness of Jean Vosper and for Paul and Reese who grieve. For lovely Olive George who leaves Peter for Tony Willis, for Robin Baxter and Peter and the whole family as they mourn, and for Edith, now resting in your love, uphold Teresa and her family. Whatever the season, May we continue to water and nurture that seed of your spirit planted within us. May it grow and give fruit. May we all remember the cycles of life, growth and dormancy, knowing that even though a seed may not appear to be doing much, spring is about to come. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Be present, be present, Lord Jesus Christ, and make yourself known in the breaking of the bread. Friends, the Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. And in this season, we praise you mostly because you raised Jesus gloriously from the dead by the power of your generous love. He has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has restored us so that we might live in the fullness of eternal life. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels praising you and saying together, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood, the promise of God's unfailing love, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So God of all goodness, we remember all that Jesus did. In him, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. God of love, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy and peace will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with St Mary, St Stephen and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. So we pray with confidence as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy, Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The body of Christ broken for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen.
Let's pray. God, who is all goodness, you have renewed us with the living bread from heaven. By it, you nourish our faith, increase our hope, enrich our imagination, and enable us to abide in love. Teach us always to hunger for him who is the true and living bread, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we pray together. God of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A prayer from St. Teresa of Avila. Let nothing disturb you, let nothing frighten you. All things pass away, God never changes. Patience obtains all things. Those who have God lack nothing. God alone suffices. And the blessing of God Almighty, Creator, Redeemer and Abiding Spirit be with you and remain with you and all you love. Pray for, miss and remember in this moment and for always. Amen. Thank you for praying for Jane Warren this week. Um, she will have, by the time you see this, she will have had her selection conference uh, for a reader. And so we're praying that that went well and that she'll be able to uh, go forward for training. As I said at the beginning, we're reopening the churches on the 23rd of May on Pentecost. Um, at St Mary's, we'll go back to doing half the alphabet each week because it's too small to contain us all but on Pentecost Sunday itself we're having a service outside like we did at Easter uh, so everybody can come and we'll be able to sing as well so that will be a wonderful celebration at St Mary's on Pentecost at St Stephen's we'll be able to come here a bigger space so we'll be socially distanced uh, and we'll enjoy being together in the church once more and as I said we'll be blessing that rose and as we go outside to do that we will be able to sing a Pentecost hymn as well together. Jean Vosper's funeral, a lovely friend from St Mary's, uh, was this last week. It was a sad but beautiful occasion. Uh, only limited numbers were allowed in, but we did record the service. So if you'd like to see that service, then please email me directly and I'll send you the link. We don't want the film to be on public in a public domain, but if you'd like to see it, email me, I'll send you the link. and. Uh, Hopefully you won't share that, we don't want you to share that, but you can use that to see the service as it happened. We sang Jean's choice of him, um, How Great Thou Art, on the day. We didn't sing it, we listened, we listened to it. And we're not allowed to have that in this service because of copyright reasons. Jean was a proud Welsh person, and so we'll sing another hymn that will evoke that wonderful connection to Wales.
I said at the beginning of the service that the altar was the business end of the church, but I don't think that was quite right. No matter how much we worship God, how we gather, how we have communion, how we reflect on God's love, it's worth nothing unless we live that love out in the world. That's the real business of our faith. So, go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.